What's up guys, this is Pink Across. Today I'm going to be going over the general team building process that I use and I'll be walking you guys through an example. Now for more specific guides like how to build offense, balance, hazard stack, hyper offense, etc. These videos will be coming in the future, but this is a process you can apply to all of these playstyles. Step one is always going to be selecting a viable Pokemon or core to build around. Now in this case, I chose Sinistra. I really like it in the current metagame. Uh, really good against a lot of Gly score sets, a lot of body press setup Pokemon in the tier right now. Uh, it's an incredible spin blocker. Really, really nice with the uh, heat proof plus strength zap combination it can actually even with uh, certain terra types really annoy gouging fire it can set up on even cinderace really massive defense stat combined with that strength sap and calm mind uh, can make it really really difficult for some teams to deal with and with the signature move of matcha gacha you can even inflict status when facing bulkier teams so but the, the main appeal is the spin blocking capabilities. This thing is the best spin blocker I can think of, which is going to influence uh, how I select this next step. So step two, really big step. This is the one most people, most newer players miss, is identifying which play style suits your Pokemon best. So, and there could be multiple. This could be, this is the point at which you can start to branch off into multiple versions, because there are many different ways to execute one play style. Maybe you think Sinistra would be great on a hyper offense, but the one I'm going to try today is Hazard Stack. And what immediately came to mind for me was just one of these these classic Ting Lu leads, like the uh, the dual hazard, because I think ha the uh, offensive Hazard Stack would probably suit Sinister best. But there are a ton of things we could do. I mean, there are a lot of versions. So I could take this and I could say, well, maybe I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Maybe I, I don't want to do that. I could do something like Landorus, you know, with Stealth Rock and maybe a uh, Samurott. That's, that's another way. This is another good, solid offensive hazard stack core. Uh, and there are, there are more. I could Maybe I don't like Landorus. Maybe instead I want to go with uh, Landorus plus, say, or maybe I don't like Samurai. I can go with an Ogre Pawn. Wellspring and run spikes on it. Like there are a lot of things I could do. Uh, for the sake of this video, so you don't see me making tons of different versions, although normally I would, I'm just going to focus on this Tinglu one. So let's hone in on this one for a moment. Now, step three is going to be identifying the best supporting partners for your Pokemon. This is another step where people really get tripped up because they think defensively really quickly. They'll think, okay, well, Sinistra and Ting Lu, oh, they're both weak to ice. Maybe I should add on like a Heatran or some kind of, or like a King Gambit. And we might end up adding that. Those are good Pokemon, but that's not how you want to think at the beginning. You want to think offensively. You want to think what's going to suit this core best in the process of breaking and actually winning the game. Because if you start thinking defensively, uh, you're going to regret it later. If you start with a bulky core, finding offensive Pokemon or ways to break later is much harder and a more awkward way to build. So as a rule, offensive synergy first, defensive synergy later. And one thing that really jumps out to me is Weavile. Reason for that is Sinistra is kind of notorious for letting in Roaring Moon. As you can see, you know, the, the double stabs is probably, we're going to be running some ghost coverage, Shadow Ball or Hex, and um, as the last comp mind. So this is double, not very effective against Roaring Moon, kind of set up fodder. So we want to have something that can punish that, and Weavile is the best at doing that. Ice Shard being able to super effectively hit Roaring Moon before Terra Flying and after Terra Flying is really nice. And this also actually does another great thing. It gives us knockoff on the Hazard stack. And another great thing, remember, I, I um, because Sinistra is really good at blocking spin, but it can't do anything against Defog, we can actually go Terra Ghost on Weavile and really take advantage of Corviknight if we run a Terra Ghost set. So this, this could be really good. Now, one other thing I like to do is I don't generally put in sets until I'm finished with the team. I like to, it keeps my mind open, but in this case, I can tell that Terra Ghost Weavile is going to be really fantastic because of how well it synergizes with Hazard Stack as a whole, but in particular, how Sinistra can cover all of the Rapid Spinners and Weavile can really take advantage of the Defog of Corviknight. So this is what I've thought is the best. Notice how Weavile works on so many levels with Sinistra and works so well on Hazard Stack. That's what made this jump out of me. You don't just want to find something good. You don't want to be like, okay, well, you know, Sinistra can't really break immediately and, uh, well, a choice banded Dragapult can. 
that's not really a great reason. You want to find something that works on many levels with the Pokemon you're building around like Weavile does. Now, step four is deciding on additional supporting Pokemon. This is the most awkward team building stage. You're not quite at the point where you're patching up holes or adding in stuff like hazards and hazard control so you know exactly what you need to add, because uh, as you get to where the end, the last one or two Pokemon, you're usually forced to add certain things. Uh, but you're not, you don't have the same freedom you do when adding the first couple of Pokemon. So this is always a bit of an awkward stage. Usually at this stage, I just pick something that feels right and kind of jump right into it. So in this case, something that's that's appealing to me is Raging Bolt. And I like this because it puts pressure on Corviknight. And remember, since Sinistra is not Goldango, it's not blocking Defog. Uh, I like that. It gives us immediate power, which we lacked before. Weavile doesn't have the doesn't have crazy attack, like 120 without high base power moves. I'm, I'm not running triple axle. Um, it's not ideal. So having this gives us additional priority, stronger priority. Uh, pressures Corviknight, really just a good general Pokemon. And the other thing I like about Raging Bolt here is that the ground types that really threaten and uh, bully Raging Bolt, you think things like Tinglu, things like uh, Specially Defensive Gliscor, Tusk, Treads, Lando, all of these are setup fodder for our boy Sinistra. So never forget the original synergy of the core. So I, I think Raging Bolt is a pretty good fit here. Now can we support this? I see we've got some major weaknesses. We've got Dragon Weakness, Fairy Weakness emerging. Can we cover it? We'll find out. Maybe I'll end up having to take Raging Bolt off the team. Before we continue, if you guys are liking the video, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. All of that really helps out. So now we're getting into the later stages. Uh, this is where you've got to add the basic requirements that if your team doesn't already have them. So things like removal, revenge killers, uh, assault cure switch in, immediate power, hazards, hazard control, resistance to all types, similar things like that. And we're doing pretty well on most of those counts, although uh, we don't have resistance to all types. So that's mostly what we're going to need to cover. Now, I would say, especially in Generation 9, you don't want to call anything a team requirement, right? Like, you don't need removal if you're running a boot spam. You don't necessarily need, you don't need revenge killers on a stall team. You don't need assault cure switching if you're running hyper offense. So use your best judgment and see if something is absolutely necessary or just generally a good idea, because uh, it's not going to be, not going to be the same all the time. One thing that I actually really like the look of here to fix at least our, our dragon problem is King Gambit. And I feel like I want to run an air balloon given just how this, how ground weak this team is. We might end up adding a flying Pokemon for last, uh, but we also definitely, if we add on a King Gambit, we definitely need our last to be a fire resist, I mean a, a fairy resist. And I don't like Corviknight or Skarm here, too passive. So it looks like we're probably, we are going to have to go with air balloon Gambit. I mean, we can check Levitate. No, nothing with Levitate is really doing what we want either. Uh, Latios is a bit too slow, a bit too frail. So one thing that really does jump out at me here is Volcarona. It gives us a speedy setup Pokemon. I, I really, really like what it does for just adding that additional threat of a sweeper to the team and also um, really just a nice, nice fairy resist, like everything on this team. If you look at the fairy types in the tier, a bulky, and we're probably going to go with a bulkier Morning Sunset. Bulky Morning Sun Volcarona shuts down almost all of these. The one it doesn't that does look very threatening for the team is Primarina, uh, but I think we can handle Primarina okay. We do outspeed with Raging Bolt. We can put on pressure with King Gambit. We'll probably run a, a speedy King Gambit, so to, uh, as to not be outsped by Primarina. But I think Primarine is a little scary, so we'll keep our eye and see how the team does in testing. But I would say this is looking pretty solid. Now, at this stage, we're going to move on to step six. So this is check if you lose to anything and patch up holes. So let's see, is there anything we lose to? I'm just gonna look through the tier. Is there anything that you think, wow, I just get completely smoked by this Pokemon? I don't love facing Dragapult, but I guess what team does? I think we're okay against it as far as a team can be. Gliscor is pretty scary, depending on what Terra type and what set it is, but I don't think there's any particular, any one Gliscor set that can really ruin our day. No, Meowskaraz, probably Primarine is the biggest threat we've seen so far. We can handle Roaring Moon. We can handle Superior. Uh, Volcarona is terrifying for our team. Like, if it sets up before ours does, we're pretty much toast, so we're definitely going 
definitely going Terra Fire on King Gambit here, but doesn't look like we lose to anything. So now it's time we're going to just fill in the sets. So I'm thinking we want to go, if we don't have removal on this team, so we're going to want to run a lot of boots. Not all, but definitely mostly. I think we can just go max defense on this. Uh, I don't I don't see a particular need to do anything else. Terra type. I like steel. Get a toxic immunity. And I would say especially with the, the heat proof. I do like it. I could I could go poison. Poison could be cool here. And what that would also do is allow us to have a really good sun matchup into things like a gouging fire. It's a tough call. Steel or poison. I think Jeez, that's that's a really tough. It's a really tough one. I think I'm let's let's give poison a try. Let's give poison a try and see what happens. Actually, no, that's well, yeah, let's give poison a go. Ting Lu, um, I guess we'll go probably Terra Ghost in this, just if we like really, really want to stack hazards up on an iron treads or something. Whirlwind, Earthquake, I would say is always pretty much the best moves on this. Because of the Primo Primarina weakness. Normally I would run defensive on this, but because of how weak we are to Primarina, I think I actually want to go specially defensive. And I, I do like the red card here. Weavile, as we've established, we got to go boots on this guy. Terra Ghost with the, I prefer pickpocket. That's just me. And yeah, this set looks good. I think definitely this Terra Ghost, um, you can, the fact that you can just sweep through body press Pokemon with this is hilarious. Raging Bolt, Definitely just booster energy, Dragon Pulse, Thunderbolt, Thunderclap, and Calm Mind. And we'll, we'll go with the standard Terra Fairy. I usually don't try to go too crazy with my Terra types. Or actually, we will. Do we want to go flying here? I think we actually do want to go flying because we only have Air Balloon. King Gambit is our flying, our, uh, flying immunity, and that is not a great one. So we want to outspeed King Gambit, of course. Hit that, that 219. There we go max modest and we can put the rest in hp and a little bit in defense just so we have the uneven hp gotta make sure the pokemon are female almost forgot don't want to show off that you don't have contact moves don't want to lose to cute charm supreme overlord ability check heat proof vessel room pickpocket and there's there's nothing worse than loading up into a game and realizing you forgot the ability like you've got a defiant king gambit or worst of all a gly score with hyper cutter so standard set here iron head sucker punch as i said i think we do want to go faster on this guy so we're not getting outsped by primarina and i definitely like a bulkier volcarona here so i think the terra dragon set fits pretty well terra blast fiery dance morning sun and these guys like to go timid and i like to hit 282 that means you can outspeed outspeed uh, dragapult after one quiver dance 248 hp and the rest in defense so now we're going to move on to step seven and this is the step that's going to take the longest which is test and adjust so i'm going to go on ladder and let's see how this team does okay loading up into one fast so this is this is an interesting i'd say we definitely faced um a team that will give us a challenge right off the bat. I I feel like I actually really like Sinistra here. Sinistra seems great, but let's let's see. I do think we just start off with Tinglu and Stack Hazards. I, I don't see any removal. So let's do it. Let's do that. We do have to be aware here. We do have to be aware of this Ogre Pond. This is going to be a big pain. The good thing is it can only Terra Grass, so our Weavile could definitely go crazy this game if we can find some way to wear down the Garganacle. But yeah, I see a lot of ways to win this. I, I could see Volcarona winning. I could see Sinistra winning. I could see Weavile winning. Even King Gambit I could really see winning. So let's. I'm, I'm going to just not get uh, bogged down in the possibilities too fast. This can superpower me. If it's Life Orb, that'll do a chunk. Let's see how much, but... Okay, he's just going to go into Gliscor. I'm really happy with this. I do not mind trading. Okay, so Toxic. If this is not... If this is Toxic EQ, our King Gambit completely walls this and might just straight up win the game. That would be... That would be incredible news. And it's also not Sword Stance, which is good, because I would say Sword Stance is probably the hardest set for my team to deal with. 
the one problem though is we will need to start knocking stuff off because i would say based on how this team is orient oh it's u-turn okay so the it's not going to be walled but uh interesting let's just get up the final we're probably going to get super powered here but it won't kill okay the guard comes in and it's not boots that's awesome so i'm going to whirlwind that guard just so it's taking even more damage the next time and i'll go for um go for whirlwind here why not we're probably just going to die just let the tinglu go down i'm liking how the team is it 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 feels good it's functioning well i mean if i ran into a hatterene with the tinglu lead that would be unpleasant but i'm so far i'm liking how the team is playing We just gotta get, if we get a little bit of chip on that Ting Lu, well, I guess Ting Lu and the Gliscor, we need to chip before a Volcarona win. So maybe that's a little, a little bit more of a distant possibility than I would like to admit. <sighs> Is it time to just go Sinistra and go for this? I feel like it might be. Ah, but this thing, it gets Encore. It gets a whole bunch of annoying stuff. Let's go Raging Bolt here and click Dragon Pulse because that's going to chip the Ting Lu. And I think we, we might, we might even actually beat this Ting Lu on Switch in. Actually, let me... Yeah, I, I, I was considering the crits there is bad. I think that means we guaranteed die to Earthquake from Ting Luno. But I would say I was considering clicking Calm Mind, but with this thing having Encore, that's not worth the risk. Okay, but we're going to just Dragon Pulse. Cool. I say we just Thunderbolt. I don't think Goldango can kill us with anything, but okay. Well played. And we see this is Boots. So I, f I actually I see no reason not to just go into the Teapot here. And... I don't, I don't see this Tinglu staying in. I don't see it staying in. I'm going to go into Weavile on what I predict will be the Gly score. Okay, the Goldengo comes in. I think, I think it would be worth just taking the Terra here and losing Weavile, would it? Yeah, let's, let's go for the knockoff. Actually, uh, Weavile's good. Weavile's good. Let's, yeah, I'm going to knock off. If he Terras, he Terras. He'll Terra a Goldengo. And it probably won't live the next entry hazard, so he'll really be tossing away his Terra if he decides to go for this play, which is valid. I could see it happening, but that would uh, that would definitely open up the door for Sinistra big time. He's thinking about it. I think he's actually not going to Terra. Usually when people wait like this, they're trying to goad you into thinking they are going to make some big play, and then he's just going to like sack it or something. And click make it rain or focus blast, hoping I make some kind of switch. But no, I'm just gonna stay and keep it simple, click knockoff. A lot of time. A lot of time on this turn. Hmm. Well, while we're just sitting here, I hate Electric Terrain as a playstyle. I think it's just awful. Just an awful time. Okay, there we go. As I figured, he was kind of waiting to make it seem like he was going to make some big play that was never coming. Sinistra... Well, how would Sinistra take a Psycho Boost? I'm going to venture a guess and say not well. What is this set I'm looking at? Okay, well anyway, let's let's get rid of this. Psycho boost, and it's not life orb, it's sh sash works. Okay, it wouldn't take it well. Not well at all. Let's go Raging Bolt. I think that's pretty expendable at this stage. And uh Yep, I kind of figured that would be what was coming out. So part of me wants to just go into Sinister right here. I feel like that's not actually not not a bad call. The other option is actually going Weavile and hitting the Terra Ghost. Which could be something. Uh, I'm just gonna go Sinistra and go for the uh, Calm Mind here. I think that's pretty solid. Because if the Gliscor comes in, I'm clicking Terra Poison.
Okay, let's do this. I think it's got to be Terra Poison and then Macha Gacha. An Earthquake is doing not much. Okay, and the, the, that does come out, but but I think I can... I think I catch something coming in here. I don't think anything on this team can take this Macha Gacha well at all. I did get red there a little bit, but I don't, I don't think it's the end of the world. Okay, the Ogre Pond comes in. That's fine. Uh, let's let's Shadow Ball. Hits everything pretty well. I don't think the Ting Lu would come in here. I, I don't think the U-turn is happening. I think you've got to commit. And Encore would be fine. I don't mind spamming Macha Gacha. The Encore SD knockoff. Yeah, it's probably just going to let it go. And, you know, the thing is, this is so likely to have Encore. I'm not sure if I want to go for the Strength Zap here. No, that's, um... I think I can just Strength Zap this thing absolutely into Oblivion if it decides to, to Encore me. So, okay, it's just going to Encore me into Shadow Ball, which is solid. I'll take that. I definitely do see King Gambit as being a very likely way that this game ends. I believe the Deoxys is going to kill me. With a Psycho Boost, yeah, 100% does. Uh, let's... Let's go Weavile. And Volcarona on the superpower, because this Volcarona is just not that helpful, and if we get a, uh, if we get a Flame Body, that would be... Very, very nice. No flame body, that's that's fine. I uh, can't really complain about that. And I think I'll go into Sinistra here on the okay on that. And let's um let's strength sap. Earthquake is not going to do that much. Now the probably the the uh, Deoxys comes in. Ah, but he might be if, yeah, okay, so well played, well played. Uh, and this time I think I will go into Volcarona. Because I think I I think the uh Yeah, superpowers coming off. Hmm. I'll fiery dance here. Try to get a little bit of damage off. If I can get this into ice shard range, that would be really nice. Okay, and that that's going to happen. Let's go for another one. Why not? Probably gonna get poisoned here. Oh no, not even. That's wonderful. Oh, I'll go for another one. If the Garganacle comes in. That's fine. I can go into Sinistra on that very easily. And just start spamming Macha Gacha until a Terra happens. Yeah, I'm liking the fact that this team is doing well. Because usually the more bulky hazard stacks beat the more offensive hazard stacks. So, okay, the Gliscor goes down. That's wonderful news. And this is going to have to Psycho Boost to take me out here. So I feel like... Is this a foolish play to go into? Let's... Let's go into Weavile. And I can go into Volcarona here and fish for another Flame Body. Because so that's kind of all Volcarona is going to do at this point. Unfortunately, we don't get the Flame Body there. But I can Fiery Dance this turn, and then, yeah, the Psycho Boost eventually is going to just come out and take take that. I'm going to go Gambit. And then I think switch into Sinistra, because I'm expecting a Terra here. Either a Terra or a Switch, and either way, I think Sinistra is the, the man for the job. In retrospect, maybe going into Weavile and Ice Sharding would have been a little bit better. Because that would kind of force the chip I need for King Gambit Sucker. So, probably in retrospect, not a great call. But the team is on trial here, not my midnight laddering decisions. guy is really taking his time. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen here. And yep, sure enough, the uh, the Terra comes out and it's fighting, which is cool. Let's go Weavile here. Okay, and the Ting Lu comes out. Yeah, I mean, let's SD. Why not, right? Actually, okay, how much is? That's let me let me think a little harder about that play. Okay, no, Icicle Crash is the better play here. Okay, Garg comes in. Let's see. I think I can. If I hit this, we're, we're good against Garg. 
Holy crap, that's a fat Pokemon. I'm gonna Swords Dance here, because Protect is likely. Yep, I'm, okay, that's really good. That's really, really good. I figure the Protect would be happening, and if it didn't, you know, worst case uh, scenario, uh, Weavile got Salt Cured, and I would have been able to survive that. Um, I would have been able to take out the Garga and survive that. 1,000% Ice Shard here. Just get this thing into Sucker Punch range. So I go King Gambit here, and I'm going to double into Sinistra. This is actually kind of like, this is a pretty much guaranteed win situation for me. Because if he predicts it and takes out the Sinistra, then I can't get Whirlwinded. Okay, so... Actually, no, ah, but the, um... This is now a little bit tricky. Because there, yeah, there is the Ruination. I'm going to Machu Gacha here. Or no, that's a joke, Shadow Ball. In case of the, 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 um... Because I, I do have two chances to flinch the Tinglu. In retrospect, though, I'm, I'm thinking maybe not. this was not the best call. Okay, so yeah, so the Psycho Boost does come off. I can go King Gambit here, and I, I definitely Sucker Punch here. Okay, and the Tinglu comes out. So I don't need any boosts to kill the Deoxys. I don't believe... yeah. So it's time to Iron Head. And I just need one flinch. Okay, or that. That'll do. So that should be game... I don't think there's anything. Yeah, I'm just going to Iron Head. Iron Head twice. Yeah, the, with the odds of Ruination missing, the two Iron Head chances to get the flinch, the odds were in my favor there. And this will this will finish off the Deoxys. He's got all... There's no way this thing has, like, Stealth Rock. I don't know what, what game he's... Uh, what who, who, who he thinks is fooling. I'm not clicking Sword Stance. Good game. Okay, yeah, so... Well, that is one of many. When you test this, the, I would need to do that so many times to determine if this team is really good. And eventually, I'm probably going to run into something that's going to make me say, oh gosh, maybe I need to change something. And when I do, I don't know, maybe I get destroyed by a gouging fire or something, and then I decide to go maybe Terra Fairy on Sinistra to help with the Gouging Fire matchup, right? So there are things you can change, but, um, and that, that's step eight, is repeating steps, right? Sometimes you need to go back. Sometimes you might determine that even though as many tests as you do and as many adjustments as you make, the team just isn't working. It could be the initial core you had wasn't able to be made into a great team. So the team building process is uh, iterative and you'll probably cycle through many times before you get an ultimate product that you're happy with. So just to kind of go over what those steps are again, step one, select a viable Pokemon or core to build around. Step two, identify a play style that suits your chosen Pokemon best. Step three, identify the best supporting partners for your Pokemon and make sure to focus on offensive synergy first. Step four, decide on additional supporting Pokemon. Step five, add basic requirements if your team doesn't already have them. Step six, check if you lose to anything, just go through the tier and patch up holes. Step seven, test and adjust. And step eight, repeat steps. It's a cycle. I'll see you guys next time and have a great day.